I'm Max Beasley, and you're listening to the 5D Podcast. This is Andrew Berkeley, and you're listening to the 5D Podcast. Hey, this is Level Up Leroy, and you're listening to the 5D Podcast. Get yourself ready for an interdimensional sensory experience. Welcome all to the dimension of sci-fi, fantasy, and horror. This is the 5D Podcast. Hello there and welcome to the 5D Podcast brought to you by Stuart and Zach from 5D-blog.com. Welcome to those of you listening live on Twitch. Also, welcome to those of you listening on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn and Stitcher. Be sure to check out the 5D-blog.com website for blog articles, competitions and news. And of course, check out the 5D YouTube channel, the details for which can be found on the 5D website. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm fine. I'm 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 a bit excited because we we've got a bit of a special mm-hmm. coming up, haven't we? We've got um a conversation coming up with a, a, a an actress who I know you had a special uh love of in, in your younger days. Is love a, a too strong a word? No, I would no that's exactly the word. When I was young there was two loves of my life, one of which yeah. was Lucy Law Lawless as Xena Warrior Princess. And yeah. then the second was Miriam Sirtis as okay. Diana Troy. Well well, luckily for you, Marina Sirtis has responded to um, my test wins for Lucy Lawless as yet is, is hasn't. So maybe she's still she's still on, on our list, um, as, as it were. We were supposed to speak with um, Marina last week, this time last week. So we're, we're recording this on the Friday. Last Friday, you were unable to take part because mm-hmm. of personal things, um, professional things and personal things. And so I advised Marina of this, and she said quite really nicely, well, you know, if, if Zach can't make it, then we shall do it this week. So this is what we're about to do uh, mm-hmm. this week. Is there anything that you want to ask her about, or is there anything well, you, you just... Well, um, uh, I think in all honesty, we are doing this after we've actually we've already spoken to her. <laughs> um, I, I, it, it was a shame we only had half an hour. She did say about speaking again, so I'll be yeah. interested to do that because she has done a lot of voiceover work for a couple of video games, um, TV shows and such. Yeah. So it would have been nice to chat about those. So maybe, hopefully, if she comes around again, we can have a chat about those. I was going to provide the illusion that we're about, this was about to happen. But well, like what I wanted to do was I did want to apologize just in case the quality <laughs> isn't great because obviously it was through... Uh, it was a telephone call this time rather yeah. than usually what we do is we'll jump on like a zoom or a discord or something like that um mm-hmm. so apologies to anybody who's listening if the quality isn't 100 percent. hopefully it comes out okay but yeah and yeah we, we, we'll do our best we'll, we'll try and clean it up and so on. but it, it is kind of yeah the, the old telephone type thing um but yeah it's, it's a nice little interview with Marie. we don't touch on like you said there's a, a thousand things that we didn't get to talk about talk Obviously, a bit about Star Trek Next Generation and Picard, but because uh, you know we, we kind of got talking about football towards the end of it, so hopefully it doesn't put you off. Um, and so we didn't quite get in, you know, you know to, the, to the limit of, of what we want to cover. But there is going to be hopefully in in the future a part two. So shall we do this? Shall yep. we play this Let's go. thing? All right. Okay. So um, thank you for speaking to us. It's 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 a pleasure, and and it's um it's a genuine thrill. And I don't want to sound kind of like blowing smoke up you, you know what? But it is it is a genuine thrill for for Zach and I to speak in with you. Um, oh bless! It, it generally is. It really is. Um, why did you move back? To, she recently moved back to the UK. Um, from the being reason in, I moved back. 
Yeah. The reason I moved back. Yeah, well, how come? Because, I mean, you've been in the States a long time, haven't you? So, 25 years, yeah. Yeah, how, what was the reason for, for, for coming back over here? Because, uh, you know, it's it's not exactly any <laughs> quieter over here when, when you talk about pol- politics and social, you know, stuff oh, going not, on. Oh, no, no. You guys, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> what do you mean? It, you, you obviously haven't lived in America, and, you know, <laughs> with Americans, because it's very different here. Yeah. It's very different here. You're not going to walk into a supermarket and have some lunatic walk in with an AR-15 and shoot the place up. True, true. true. You're, you're not going to send your kids to school with, you know, you're not going to send your kids to school in the fear that some lunatic's going to come in with an AR-15 and kill your kids. Yeah. Your kids don't have to learn what to do when a crazy gunman comes into the school. This is normal happenstance in America. Yeah. Even in kindergarten, they have to learn how to protect themselves when the lunatic with the gun comes into the school. So is it more, is it more of a kind of social kind of, you know, thing rather than work on, and, and career-wise? That, that well, I'll tell you what, I mean, first, first of all, four years of Trump did me in. Yeah. Actually, four years of Trump did me in. Um, and then he actually, after four years of evil... He got 10 million more votes than he did the first time. It was crazy, wasn't it? Absolutely crazy. Yeah. And then they and then they attacked the Capitol on January the 6th. There was an insurrection. Yeah. And and my husband passed away. And so it was like a bit of everything, actually. I thought, well, Michael's not here anymore. He, you know, he was American. Yeah. Michael's not here anymore. This country's gone to hell in a handbasket, and I don't want to live here anymore. I, I, just, I just hated being surrounded by all that well it uh, i mean craziness yeah i mean at least now you can spot a trumper at a hundred paces because they're not wearing a mask <laughs> <laughs> you know whereas before you had to talk to them to find out where they stood yeah but now you can just spot them a mile away because none of them are wearing a mask yeah and they're not socially distancing and if you tell them to wear the, a mask they will spit in your face yeah 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 oh, it's a, you know it you know what it was four years um, that I couldn't believe the 180 degree dif- turn difference that happened to the American people in four years. It was like there was a plaster over the the poison, and he ripped the plaster off, and it all came flooding out. It was always there. Yeah, I've been to the South. I've been to the Midwest. I've had my share of you know facing that kind of ra- the racism it's racism at yeah, the end of the day yeah. that's what it is it's all racism um, and fear of the other it's racism and bigotry you know yeah. um, you've got to think this is a country where they have pray the gay away clinics yeah yeah I just got sick of it. I just got sick of being in a country where I was having to fight for abortion rights again, for gay rights again, for, um, for um, I mean, forget trying to get rid of the guns. There's more guns than people. That's never going to happen. Yeah. You know, and I was actually really quite fearful that there might be a civil war. So when did you come back over? When did you move back um, fully? Three months ago. Three months ago. Okay. All right. So, mm-hmm. so it would have been still in the, the sort of the the midst of the the most recent lockdowns and everything else that's kind of been going on here. Hopefully, I mean, what what's it been like in terms of work wise? I mean, obviously it's affected people. Well, there's not there's nothing. I mean, really, there's not much going on right now with the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, in, when it comes to theatre, I think a lot of the stuff that got cancelled and delayed because of the pandemic. I mean, they're going to get first dibs on the theatres when yeah. they open up again. I mean, you know, so the actors that should have had a job sure. hopefully will have a job again. Um, um, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I, you know what? I'm not really fussed right now. Um, I'm quite enjoying just being back home yeah. and catching up with all my friends yeah. and uh, going to places that I hadn't been to and doing stuff that I hadn't done for well, a long time. Nice. And nice. Uh, and you know, when something comes along, you know, that I want to do, I'll do it. But. Uh, Trust me, a 66-year-old woman doesn't exactly isn't exactly ducking from the scripts they're chucking at her. Is that still the case? Is it, has it still not moved on in terms of parts that? Well, it didn't. It hasn't in America. Yeah. Over here, it's a bit better. Yeah. Actually, it's a lot better over here because at least they write for 
for, for women of all ages and creeds and you know di- it, it, you know you don't not not every woman on television is 25 and blonde in America in 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 the UK yeah so you know it, it's very different I mean I just watched the pact well that group of women was never I mean that would never be a cast in America right 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 yeah. ever in a million years yeah. that, you know that group of women so I mean the oldest one would be 40 and work down, you know. Yeah, I, I we, we almost you won't know this, but we we almost spoke a couple of years ago because um, I'd, I've been speaking to Andrew Keats. You'd just gone into you were I think a week or two into rehearsals for Dark Sublime. Um, yeah. So this is what 2018 was it? 19? Um, yeah. And Good. Uh, well, actually, uh, I hadn't been on stage like doing a straight play. I'd done some panto, but I hadn't done a straight play in over 20 years. So um, it was, but again, again, that was in the United States. It wasn't here. Um, you know, I was a bit nervous because, you know, for the first time ever, my name was above the title. Yeah. You know, and uh, that carries a responsibility and a bit of stress. But... Um, it was a wonderful experience. It really was. Um, my cast were brilliant. Um, I loved the play. I mean, I, when I read it, I thought, God, Michael Dennis wrote this. He knows <laughs> me. He wrote this for me. And then, of course, he didn't write it for me. Um, he didn't know me. I don't know if he even knew my work. I don't know if he even approved of my casting when he first <laughs> heard about it. I'm not sure. I never asked him. But uh, anyway, it was great. Um, the the problem is that, you know, it was his first play that was produced. I don't know if he's written other plays, but this was the first play that was produced. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a good argument for banning writers from the rehearsal room. <laughs> so it's like, keep them out until the first night, you know. Um because they're very precious about their work sure. and they don't want to cut anything and they, they, they don't think their play's too long, you know, uh, but it was and uh, it got to, you know, and the good, well, the good thing, the bad thing, whatever it is, what, whichever side of the coin you're on, um, once they, after the first night, the writer, I mean, he might pop in occasionally to see it and the director might pop in occasionally to see it, but they're gone. They're gone. Yeah. And basically, you're on your own after that. Well, it got to the point where we'd come off stage and we'd go, well, that, that, that line's never got a laugh. Cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting lines out of the play. Um, and it got shorter and, and funnier. And, you know, and it was just better. So, um, sorry, Michael, but we took the scissors to it once you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, well, am I right in saying as well that it almost appearing in that almost scuppered the the plans for appearing in Picard? Wasn't was there oh, well, a problem? Oh yeah, there? when they asked me to do Picard, I had to turn it down because it clashed with my with my dates of the play. Yeah, and uh, I had one of the producers call me and was like, um, "Well, you know what?" I said, "You know, I, I know why you're calling me. I know why you're calling me, but you know, <laughs> I'm I'm doing a play in London." You know, and they're like, well, uh, well, can't you send the understudy on? And I said, well, first of all, I don't have an understudy. And secondly, people, are, I mean, just take an example. I went to see when Patrick was doing, um, I think it was the Scottish play. Okay. And um, I was in London and I was walking past the theatre one night when I knew he was off because he'd lost his voice, right? So I, I just kind of, I, I, loiter, I loitered because it was half time at the theatre and yeah. I loitered outside to see what was going on. And everyone was really upset because they hadn't just come from, you know, Hampstead or, you know, Wimbledon. Sure. They'd come from Birmingham and Manchester and Scotland and Dorset to see Patrick, right? So they were really upset that he wasn't on. <laughs> so I said to the producer that I was talking to, I said, well, I know it's not, I know I'm not as famous or as big as him, but this is my play. And people are coming, not just from all over England. I have fans that are coming from Europe. I have fans that are coming from Canada. I have fans that are coming from the United States. I said, how, how can I not, how can it, how can I send an understudy on? Even if I had one, how could I send an understudy on? Yeah. 
And so, I, I, you know, the problem with LA is that they don't respect the theatre. They think you're doing the play because you can't get a movie or a TV series. <laughs> right. If they go to the theatre, they do the red carpet on the first night and yeah. then they go out the back way without having to watch the play. I mean, I'm honestly, I've seen it happen. Um, it, they don't respect it. They don't get it. And the reason they don't get it is because there's not a lot of money in it. Yeah. If there's not a lot of money in it, they don't want to know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, he basically said to me, you know, when are you free? And I should have lied. I should have lied and said a week later than I actually was because the way it turned I was actually truthful and honest and the way it turned out was that I finished I wrapped well wrapped closed the play at half past ten on Saturday night yeah and at half past ten on Sunday morning I was actually on a plane back to LA <laughs> and on half past ten on Monday I was at the studio that's a rush. So, well, <laughs> literally, act through, you know, acting through jet lag. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. Um, so, like I said, I wish I told him a big bit, bit of a porky so that I could get an extra week off. But anyway, didn't think of it at the time. I was trying to be helpful. Uh, that won't, won't do that again, ever. <laughs> so, yeah, that was why I turned it down. It wasn't because I didn't want to act with Patrick. It was just purely dates. You know, the, the dates clashed. Were you nervous at all in, in kind of, you know, revisiting roles? It, you know, been a, you know, obviously, you know, a few years since, you know, the pre the previous incarnation of your character in, in and so forth. Um, were you nervous, or did it kind of just feel like? No, I don't know, I've played it for thirty years. Yeah. How could I be nervous? I was acting with people that I know and love. Yeah. You know, and trust. Um, you know, they tr they were treating us like we were royalty. The, uh, what they call they call us the legacy actors now because they, they can't call us the old farts. Yeah, you know, got yeah. To, got to find an, they got to find a complimentary name for us. So we're the legacy actors. <laughs> um, and the legacy actors, you know, you got to think even the other actors, if they're you know if they're Star Trek fans, they get a bit all you know fan fan girl fan boy when yeah. they meet us. Um, but no, it was it was a lot of fun. I think Jonathan was a bit nervous from what I read in his press because he said to me, "Well, you've just come on stage, so off stage, so you're at the top of your game." And Patrick's been shooting for months, so he's at the top of his game. And I haven't acted in years, and I'm really scared <laughs> that you guys are going to show me up. But he was wonderful, you know. I mean, once we can see those characters in the mirror in the makeup trailer. They're just there, you know. Yeah. Did you? Once I get those bloody contact lenses in, and that wig on. <laughs> and the wig. Am I right? Saying, am I right? Saying, reading it was the same wig that you'd wore the last time that they kept it and everything that you had to wear the, the same wig again. Is that correct? Well, actually, what happened was um, after um, after Nemesis, yeah. the hairdresser said, "You take the wig home with you, <laughs> and take the wig and take the contact lenses because they'll only get lost." Um, and so I did. I took the wig and the contact lenses. And so when they asked me to be on Picard and it had all worked out, yeah. I, I, you know, so, uh, um, I said the contact lenses have been sitting, you know, in solution for ten years or however long it was. <laughs> um, so uh, probably they need to be cleaned and uh, the wig needs sorting. And they were like, wig, wig, contact lenses. What wig? What contact lenses? <laughs> you see, so they had no clue that I wore a wig and contact lenses. So. Uh, Fortunately, I had them. Otherwise, we would have been in trouble. <laughs> the whole Star Trek thing, um, it, you know, what does it feel for you, kind of professional? Because obviously, you know, you play the part for a, a long time, and, and you know, it's fair to say, obviously, you know, it changed your whole life and career to a you know huge extent. Do you ever get to the point where you think, wow, you know, I, I need to move on now, or, or do you still enjoy talking about it and talking to fans and, and you know, so forth? What, what's your, your feeling about how it's affected you and your career and, and where it's still taking you, you know, talking to people like us now and, and into the future? How do you feel about all that? Well, if I was, if, you know what, I would be, I would be like the poster child for um, ingratitude <laughs> if, I, if I had any complaints. I mean, really. Yeah. You know, um, Star Trek has given me everything I have in my life. Yeah. And um, 
you know, it, it, you can't get away from it. it. It's so popular. I mean, and now obviously with Netflix, it's been resuscitated because you know, ev- you know, everyone can do that, but, but no one has to wait for it to come on television. They can stream it and they can watch it every day, every minute of the day if yeah. they want to. Yeah. Um, I will always be Deanna Troy. That will be the first thing on, you know, whenever whenever anyone writes anything or says anything about me, it'll be Marina Sirtis, who, you know, was most famous for playing Deanna Troy on Star Trek <laughs> The Next Generation. Yeah. And that's absolutely fine. Yeah. It's absolutely fine. Um, it's, it's opened a lot of, it's opened a lot of doors for me, obviously. Um, and the thing, and the thing is, because I'm so different to my character, I mean, first of all, the voice. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. Because <laughs> she's, cause she's not a Cockney, right? <laughs> so she wasn't born in Hackney. Um, so there's that. I mean, I always say to people, they say, oh, what have you got in common with your character? And I, I say, we're the same height. <laughs> and that's it. No, really, that's it. Because she's sweet and she's, you know, she's non-judgmental and she's all those lovely, you know, girly things and I'm not <laughs> I'm not I'm not all those good I mean I can be nice yeah but don't cross me <laughs> you know really I've, se- I've seen that on Twitter um, I've seen that on so, Twitter and, and I also speak my mind um, yeah. and not as tactfully as her yeah not as tactfully as her I have been actually Michael Dawn said to me recently am I ever going to get on a flight with you when you don't get into a fight with someone <laughs> and I said Probably not. <laughs> I usually go when I'm travelled, get into at least one fight on my travels. Yeah. I've seen you on Twitter. I mean, I follow you on Twitter, and it's kind of like, yeah, you don't, you know, if somebody says, and I mean, Twitter's a, God, it's a whole world, in anyway, isn't it? Of, 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 you know, can, you know, if you want to cause a fight, just cut, you know, say something, and within ten seconds, you know, somebody will take offence. But um, yeah, you hold your own on on Twitter. It, it, what's what's your view on social networking? Do you do you feel as if it's have you I used? Think it's distro- I think it has destroyed society as we know it. You feel that, I really yeah, do. yeah? I really do. In fact, I'm weaning myself off Twitter. I mean, I never did Facebook or Instagram because they're owned by... I mean, I don't do anything Facebook it, that's owned by Facebook yeah. because Mark Zuckerberg is the devil. And, and Facebook is the axis of evil as far as I'm concerned. Um... I mean, I just hate it. They'll take down boobs. You know, there's boobs up sure, there. They'll take, yeah, they'll delete yeah. the boobs, but they leave out all that hate speech and all the conspiracy theories and all that rubbish that they leave up there under the under the banner of oh, you know, it's First Amendment in America, free speech is protected. Well, it's not all protected. You can't scream fire in a crowded movie theater, right? Yeah. So not all speech is protected, and. The bottom line for Zuckerberg and the like is money. It's all about money. It's like there's not enough money in the world for these people. And they have no social conscience. And I just won't be a part of it. So I know I'm probably one of the few actresses who isn't on Instagram. Don't care. (laughs) Um, On Twitter, uh, I did a lot of Twitter when I lived in America because I was in a perpetual state of fury and rage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, now I'm not. I'm kind of a bit pissed off with Boris sometimes, but I'm not like <laughs> furious all the time like I was over there. Um, so yeah, also, and I just the other day I, I posted something really innocuous, and and then there's always the idiot who puts starts with the negativity and the snide remarks and the and I just thought, you know what? I'm not. I don't think I'm going to do this anymore. Yeah. I really don't. I hate all the negativity. I hate the fact... You see, I am very confrontational. I don't hide behind a, a, a profile pic. I, if I've got an issue with you, you know it. Mm. If I like you, you know it. And if I don't like you, you know it. Right? Yeah. So... And if and I'm not sca- and I'm not scared of anyone on the planet except my sister in law. I'll <laughs> say that with my hand on my heart because <laughs> she's even worse than me. But um, but I confront people if I have an issue with them. All these cowards who I mean they're cowards on Twitter. They won't say they'd never have the guts to say to your face what they say to you 
anonymously. Sure. Yeah. You know. So I've just had enough of it, really. Um, I, I, so yeah, I, I think social media is, uh, like I said, I think it's uh, it's the point. It really is destroying society. It's. I mean, kids are committing suicide because of cyberbullying. I mean, th- what is the what is the upside of social media? <laughs> I'll ask you the question. What is the upside yeah, of social media? It is a good question. I mean, for personally, for me, that social media has helped me speak to people like yourself, which for me is, you know, a, a blast. But in terms of the downside, does the downside outweigh the good side? It, it may well do. It, you know, it may well do. And I totally understand and agree with what you're saying about the cowardice and the the innocuous. And, and, and what you said about posting something quite innocuous getting a bunch of you know you know reactions often that tends to be the more the more innocuous stuff that causes people to have you know i know it's ridiculous opinions. i mean it's, it, it, it's absolutely ridiculous yeah. it really is um you know I, you know there are people who just like advertise you know like the other celebrities and actors or musicians or whatever and they and they just post you know a picture of where they are or their food or whatever it is um, I'm not interested in what you're eating. I have no interest at all in what you're eating. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, they've been trying to cancel... I mean, it's like, they've been trying to cancel me forever, right? <laughs> uh, I actually saw recently that some religious group was trying to get me fired from Star Trek, and I was like, uh, do you know, I actually don't work on Star Trek. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, so this this whole thing of like and that's the other thing that social media has done is you're not allowed to have an opinion if you don't agree with the woke yes yes right if you have a slightest disagreement with the woke people the slightest little little weeny thing say the slightest little thing yeah they, they want to cancel you so you're not allowed to have an opinion anymore and 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 social media will will destroy you so yeah I'm I'm backing away. You're I'm backing, backing away. I, I mean, I I'm going to go. I'm going to be a luddite now <laughs> and go. You know, just not. In, just not engage. I saw you before we, we finished because I only got a few moments. I did. I did see your tweet the other day about the football. I don't know if this was the, the one that you were talking about, the innocuous one, where you'd said I think it was after the, the England Scotland game, I think, and you said something about it's ninety minutes of your life that you're not going to get. I'll never back. get back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's ninety minutes of my life. I'll never get back. <laughs> England was so rubbish. Are you watching the? Ch- are you? are you not Scottish. You sound northern. Well, isn't well, it? yeah. We're, Zach and I are Leeds fans. Um, <laughs> we we briefly. Leeds. Yeah, um, and. Mm. Um, yeah, and I see. I said to you, Leeds fans are fans with very long memories. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just waiting for um, the phone call to be asked whether or not to be the next Spurs manager because I think everybody else apparently in the country has been asked recently this week. So I'm just waiting for my call. Have you, have you guys got a manager yet? Do you? Do you? Um... No, we don't. Do you know what? I, I read <laughs> somewhere that no one wants to be Spurs manager oh. right now. No one wants to take the job because of Daniel Levy. Yes. Yeah. So you know what? <laughs> this is, you know this is probably going to get me banned from the club. <laughs> but um, I don't think he's. You know what? Has he mismanaged the club for the last twenty years? I mean, I don't know. Has he? No, I, you've, got, you've, got, you've got a great you know, all stadium. That Gareth, all that Gareth Bale money yeah, wasted. Yeah, yeah. Wasted. Gone. Um, okay, so we built a stadium, but then the pandemic hit. So so what? You know. Um, I would rather. I think he did not fail. He failed to get some um, for the for the stadium rights. Did he? he failed to get yeah. stadium rights. Yeah, nobody wants. It. It's still the Tottenham Hotspur. It's still the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. No one. No one has. Um, we haven't got a sponsor to name it. You know, after them, which doesn't bother me actually. Um, actually, Spurs were the very last team in the old First Division to have advertising boards up around the ground. Did you know that? I did not know that, no. I did because not know we that. held out, because we did, you know, Bill Shankly and those guys back in the day, Yeah. they weren't, you know, greedy for the money. Yeah. And then it got to the point where we were the only club that didn't, and then we did. But we were the last club to have the, the board, you know, first division club to have the advertising board. Yeah. Um, I, to be honest, I mean, yes, the, the stadium is spectacular. I went there for the um, Champions League final and I watched it on the big screens because I was lucky enough to be in London at the time. Yeah. But um, I would rather, to be honest, as a Spurs fan of 50 years, still be going to White Hart Lane as it was with a decent bloody team that can win something. 
and I, I know what you mean. I mean, our, our ground is in the process of being planned to be expanded. But the good thing is that we're not moving from Elland Road. It's you know we're going to be staying there where the, where the history. Well, is. we didn't move. I mean, we didn't move. It's exactly the same place where the old ground was. It's just bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly the same place. Yeah. Um, uh, because we owned the land, you see, Spurs owned the land that it was built on. So that's, we've always been one of the richest clubs in the league, believe it or not, because <laughs> we own the land that the, that the ground stands on, I think. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, 50 years of, of, of uh, well, heartache, because I was six last time we won the league. Oh. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, apparently I was reading to was it today or yesterday the 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 hurricane saga is continuing. Was it hundred million that's been rumoured? He has to go. He has to go. He'll go on to. He has to go. He has to go. Yeah. No. He, look, he loves Spurs. We always know that. Yeah. Yeah. But if you love Harry Kane and I love Harry Kane, he has to go where he can win something because he's you know. One of the best strikers is top top three strikers in the world, right? Gotta be. And all he has on his mantle are three golden boots and and, and, a, and a World Cup golden boot. Yeah, yeah. It's not enough. Maybe it's not enough. He needs to go to a club. He needs to go to City and win a, win a league, win a cup, get some silverware on his mantelpiece because he he deserves it. I think he'll go to City, and I also think um, I also think. He'll score against Germany on Tuesday night. So give it, oh, before well, we, it's that time. Um, well, you know what? If Germany play like they played against Hungary, I'm not scared of them. No, me neither. I totally agree. I th um, yeah. If I they th played like they played against Hungary, bring them on. I think this is England's you know? best chance. I would totally agree with you. Best chance in a long time to actually do a tournament win um, over them. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? It's the hope that kills you. It really is, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's the hope that kills you. I said to my brother, actually, to, uh, towards the end of the season, I said, Steve, I said, look, when I get all excited next season when Spurs, like, are top of the league for five minutes, <laughs> could you remind me? <laughs> could you remind me that it's transient and it's not going to be the same at the end of the season? Because, you know, I was all excited. We were top of the league. Mourinho was doing well. Yeah, like, oh, my God, yeah. oh, my God. We beat Man United 6-1 <laughs> Old Trafford. It was brilliant. And then, of course, I got all hopeful, and then that's what killed it me. It is the hope that kills you. And speaking as a Leeds fan, that's, a, that's a, the, the truest thing I've ever heard in my life so I completely agree with you yeah there. well listen I remember <laughs> you're too young because you know I probably got shoes older than you but I I um I remember the the Leeds teams the ones with Billy Bremner and Alan Clark and those yeah. guys um because well first of all they won everything because they were the dirtiest team <laughs> ever <laughs> And you can't deny that that they were the dirtiest team. I, I I I do think there is a little a little bit of a myth yeah. in terms of maybe how to sort of the truth in there. There is yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. but compared to some of the other teams at the time, I mean, you know, no, no, don't compare it. No, they stood <laughs> alone. They were top of the heap when it came to being dirty. I think I think Chelsea I could always there. win. This. I saw it with my own eyes. Don't even argue with me. Um, I used to go to every game. Actually, I used to always say I used to go to every. I used to go to Tottenham every week yeah. and people go well wait a minute they're playing away every other week why are you going every week because I would go and watch the reserve right 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 and then in the morning sometimes I'd go to Cheson when they were training in Cheson and go and watch the youth team play yeah. so you know I was a dedicated fan so <laughs> I, I've uh, I've seen all those I've seen all those teams and um well, on, on, that, on, that, on that little bit of hope, um, that it probably hopefully won't kill us, give, give us a quick prediction before I let you go, because obviously I know you're very busy and you, you, you fit us into a very hectic schedule this weekend. I really do appreciate that. Give us a quick prediction. Uh, there's about a thousand Star Trek and other questions. I want to talk about Crash and, God, about a thousand other things, but we haven't had time. Um, give me a quick prediction then for the England-Germany game before we go. What do you reckon? What score? 1-0. One 1-0 one England, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. 1-0 yeah. England. I'm yeah. thinking 2-1 I'm thinking England. But we, we, you think 2-1? I think so. I think so. Um, well, we haven't, we haven't conceded yet. No. We haven't conceded yeah. yet. I suppose, it's cause, I suppose you might be right. It might be 2-1. Please God, no um, penalties. Please God, no penalties. That's all I say. I don't... I couldn't well, do Well, you know, 
we've broken we've broken the jinx. We can win on penalties. Though. True, we, we did, did in Russia, didn't we? World Cup. We can win on penalties. Maybe not against Germany. <laughs> <but> yeah, <laughs> let's see the penalty Germany. shoot out. Like, I always think, you know, with Germany, but it's not the same Germany anymore. You know, the Germany of um, explain, you know, describe football. You know, twenty-two players kicking the ball around for ninety minutes, and then Germany wins. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's the case anymore. Thank goodness. Yeah, I would but agree. They, you know. Listen, Marina. Turn it on against England. You never know. know. Absolutely, and and you know, maybe just this one time, it might not be the hope that kills us. It might be the hope that you know carries us through. So who who knows? Uh, Marina, thank you. Fingers crossed that we actually, you know, if if Harry Kane wins that, he might not leave. You never know. That could be the key you that know? keeps him there, especially if he gets a couple and then we get further on and he, he nails yeah, a few in maybe. there. Yeah, maybe. You never know. You never know. Anyway, thank you. Talk more about football than my career. I but know. That's all right by me. <laughs> 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 thank you for your time, Reno. I've talked about my career for 30 years and I never get sick of talking about football. Hey, oh, so. I mean, uh, football I could talk forever on football, but uh, there you go. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you for talking about football and as well as a bit about your career as well. It's been an absolute blast. It's been, uh, a, you know, a joy. Thank you for your well, time. You. And Thank you, you take so care. Much. All right, you take care. Thank well, you. we'll, we'll talk again when I actually have something to publicise. You bet, yeah, keep it in mind. Right. We'll talk All again. Right, All right, you take okay, care. Zach, you were very quiet, but I hope you enjoyed the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I did indeed. All right, love. Okay. All right, take care. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye.